You don't get a medal for a natural birth. I don't think you can do it. You're going to be begging for the epidural. If you're still talking to family and friends about how you want to have a natural birth and they are not supporting you, then let me just tell you something. Nobody believed I could have a natural birth either. I am the biggest wimp when it comes to needles, when it comes to pain. I had terrible period cramps and everyone kept saying, you're not going to be able to handle a baby. You can't even handle a little bit of back pain. You can't even handle a needle. So what makes you think that you could go through a completely natural childbirth? Well, I proved them wrong twice. First time in the hospital, even though I didn't want to be there. And second time at home where I don't even remember any actual pain. There was a lot of pressure at points. But unless I was actively resisting my body, just for an experiment, no pain. In fact, it was the most amazing birth experience of my life. And it's what got me falling in love with physiological birth, which I call the true natural birth. So what do you do when your family and friends are against you? Well, the thing is, is that you can't convince them. I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter how much education you give to them, no matter how much you argue your case, they're not going to believe you until you actually prove them wrong. Until that happens, they are going to continue to undermine your confidence. So your best bet is to take a deep breath, go inward, connect with your truth that you can, that you can do this, and then basically put like a an invisible screen or a bubble between you and those people who do not believe in true natural birth because the fact is is that they've just been indoctrinated into a system and birth culture that has perpetuated the idea that birth is painful birth is traumatic you have to leave your dignity at the door and that you're not going to be able to handle the pain there was a huge campaign way back in the 1920s to start this ball rolling. It's like as soon as women got the vote, suddenly they were like, hey, you don't need to have a painful childbirth. Let's put you in the hospital, drug you up with scopolamine and Demerol, and you won't remember a thing. And then they slowly started to chip away at the idea of home birth until everybody was birthing in the hospitals by the 1970s. And there was only a few holdouts from there. And it's just gotten worse with 99% of births happening in the hospital. Most moms not knowing that the natural birth that's being perpetuated in the medical system, it's not actually natural. It's just unmedicated vaginal birth, which is why it's more painful, why it's more traumatic, and why so often things go wrong. But let me just read from one of the chapters of my book, Your Empowered Birth on the subject of getting the right support. Because this is what it's what it comes down to is if your family and friends are not supporting you, you need to go elsewhere. Okay? So, I want you to imagine that you're telling your friends and family about your desires for your ideal birth. You've worked through most of your fears and limiting beliefs, you have the education behind you, you've chosen home birth, and you've chosen a care provider that aligns with what you want. You're all excited and pumped for this birth. As you're telling your family and friends this amazing plan you've come up with, you can see their lips press into a thin line. They're looking at you with a mix of fear and concern. They might even frown or roll their eyes at what you want. And some might tell you there's no trophy for a natural birth. Others might have had this exact opposite of what you want and tell you don't get your hopes up. Some of those friends and family members might even be offended that you don't want the same kind of birth that they had. If you have a particularly high-strung mother, she might even insist that you abandon your plans for your birth and choose something safer. Your aunt might try to talk some sense into you. A particularly meddlesome in-law might ask your spouse, are you really going to let this happen? You start to feel cornered, and with none of your friends or family members able to understand, you may turn to the online mom groups. There you try to find some common ground and ask questions about what tests and procedures you could safely refuse, or you outright ask if anyone else is having the kind of birth you want. But if you're not in the right community, then you can probably guess what's going to happen. 
You get bombarded with comments about how you're being selfish. Or they say, I would never put my baby at risk like that. Misinformation abounds because most of the moms are going by what their care providers have told them. And the more the mainstream the group, the more likely their care providers are giving heavily biased opinions that will ultimately lead to more interventions and birth trauma. Put another way, if your care provider is your coach, then your support team is your cheering squad. So you don't want to run a marathon where all your supporters are telling you that what you're trying to do is too hard and that you should just give up before you even start. One way to guard against the negative voices and to get some real support is to hire a doula. Another way you can protect your headspace is to find other people who have, are planning or have already had the same kind of birth you want. So that's the thing is that um, what you have to do is if your friends and family are not supportive, you need to build a new community. This includes moms who have had natural births. This includes bringing in friends that can actually support you and your cheering squad. You really need to have your partner on board because your partner is the one that can tell your nosy mother or your mother-in-law or your sister-in-law or any other relatives that you're coming into contact with. They can be the one to tell them to back off so that you feel more supported and safe in planning the birth that you actually want without allowing other people to project their fear onto you, without them getting into your head and basically making you think that you can't do it. Because what this leads to, if you allow other people to tell you what you can and can't do in your birth or try to scare you, if you let those fears in, what this ends up doing is you end up starting to doubt yourself and wonder, can I really do this? In fact, I see this in the mom groups all the time. Is the moms will come in and they've got absolutely no support and you can tell. And they're like, can I really do this? How am I going to be able to get this baby out of me? How am I going to be able to cope with the pain? I'm such a wimp. I don't have a high pain tolerance. Guess what? The high pain tolerance is a myth. Just like the myth that your body doesn't work. Just like the myth that you actually need anybody to tell you how to give birth. Just like the myth that you have to prepare your body for birth. You don't need to prepare your body as much as you prepare your mindset. And when you also create that foundation around you, that environment, that support system, then what happens is that you're able to get the kind of birth that you actually want. So as I said, inside my book, Your Empowered Birth, I talk about the five pillars of empowered birth. And you can go to my website, empoweringmomsbirth.com forward slash chapter. You can read the part that I just gave you, which is on the right support. That's in chapter five as well. And you're going to get the other five pillars. You're also going to be able to get access to the same book bonuses that come with this book. So just go to my website again, empoweringmomsbirth.com forward slash chapter. Get that. And basically protect yourself from all of that fear and all of that negativity. And I will see you soon. Bye.